What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to episode 16 of the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I am your host, David Soto Jr., and it is a weird spring here, the weather... Currently, I'm in Colorado Springs, but it doesn't matter. All of Colorado is just weird right now with the weather. It's spring. It's April something, and, you know, I should be fishing. I shouldn't have to be worried about getting, you know, walking in snow, which all the snow is gone here. But uh, two days ago, it was dumping. And, of course, by yesterday, it was almost all gone. And uh, so I'm in my buddy's driveway, and... We've had a lazy Sunday. I did some laundry. I sharpened a knife that I bought off a homeless guy. That's another story that I'm not too excited about. Basically, I paid $14 for a $20 knife. But oh well. At least I didn't. At least he sold me something. He didn't just beg for money. Um. So today I want to talk about... And I don't usually do stuff like this, but it, there's more to it. This isn't a, this isn't a, a how-to podcast, but it involves me being able to share my story. All right. So what I'm going to talk what I'm going to talk about today is how to get better. Is this, how to get better at anything. Okay. And I literally mean anything. How I'm, I think I got what here? Sure, here are four steps. But if you want to get better at anything, there's it's pretty easy. The process in getting better at that, regardless of what it is, is pretty easy. Let's just jump into it. Step one is going to be decide what it is you want to get better at. Now, my, little, my little brother called me and said, the other day, you got any audiobook suggestions? I'm like, well, what is it you want to, uh, what is it you're interested in? What do you want to learn about? Actually, he called them Automobile University Suggestions. That's a little tribute to Zig Ziglar, who I guess we both kind of listened to a bunch. <clears throat> he was a lot younger, so he was forced to listen to him because my dad listened to him. Um, but I can't go wrong with little uh, little Zig. But decide what it is you want to get better at. Now, here's the thing. I've also You can apply this to anything, uh, whether it's a skill, whether it's an a ability, uh, mental or physical, or uh, whether it's emotional, actually. Uh, It could be like treat your wife better. It could be get better at using a slingshot. It could be get better at kneeling down to pick stuff up, which is kind of important when you think about... um, As we get older and as we age, we want to be able to squat down and get back up. Um, I mean, this isn't a health health and physical wellness show, but you got to think about it. In old age, one of the biggest issues that we have is uh, falling down and not being able to get up or walking or using a walker or any of those things. And I think about those stuff. I want to be able to squat down like... Squat down. I'm gonna uh, call a pistol. Squat down on one leg. You know, think of the strength you have if you can squat on one leg, all go all the way back down. If not that, then we're talking like uh, split squats, where you're not in the perfect squat position. Your your feet are staggered, but you can squat down and tie your shoe, for example. Um. So anything. So something like doing a squat. Um. If if it's something you want to get better at, you know, decide on it. Make that decision. Uh. It could, but literally, it could be anything. If you're a guitar player, if you're a real estate agent, whatever the case is, if you want to get better at something, there's a process to do it. But first, you have to pick that thing that you want to get better at. Um, that's that's important. And I have an example of something where I was talking about. Uh, no, I guess not. I guess not. Little that example with my brother, and um, you know, it all comes down to. kind of deciding what it is you want to it doesn't have to be but it can be like deciding what it is you want to be when when you grow up or what it is you want to to do uh for me i didn't know until i was 41 i guess 
that I wanted to start writing fiction. So I never wrote fiction until this point. And I started writing it, and it was terrible. And I kind of started writing a little bit earlier, but pretty much at the age of 40, I'm trying to, 40, 41, I'm trying to write fiction for the first time in my life. And it it's, doesn't go well, or even if it does go well. So my first book, um, Los Chocolates, it's good. Trust me. I like it. Buy it. Go buy it, please. I'm trying to sell a million of them. I'm trying to sell a million books. But already I've gotten better as a writer. So even readers have read Los Chocolates and then read Marisol, right? The whore Marisol Rivera and have been able to see that I'm, I've am i already gotten better in my second book. Well, my third and fourth already. And I've even written one in there. I've probably written a few more books. And so I heard that this was the case with Andy Weir. That if you read The Martian, you can tell because he took such a long time to write The Martian, you could tell that he got better as a writer. I haven't read The Martian, though. Do I own it? You know, I did own it for a while, but I finally got tired of carrying it around. I turned it in. I sold it. Uh, but for me, I want to get better as a writer. Now that I've realized it, I've made made the decision and I want to get better as a author and a nonfiction writer. That's my personal um, decision of what I want to get better at. One of them anyways. So if you make your decision, step two is to do it. Now I know this sounds counterintuitive. Is that the word? Well, how do you know how to do it if you don't know, if you don't take any instruction, right? Which obviously is what th- number three is, get instruction. But I got to tell you that nobody taught me how to write fiction. You know, I'm gonna. You know, Bob B. Sink may disagree. He's my high school creative, creative writing teacher, but I really didn't learn anything. Maybe he gave me opportunities, or opportunities to write, but I just basically started writing, and writing and writing and writing and writing and every day, and it wasn't always fiction. But when it got to fiction, I just, I just kept going. I kept going, and I had a lot of experience writing nonfiction. I'm somewhere around 39, 38, I started writing articles, right, from my blog, I started blogging, and kind of when I got to fiction, I had already a couple of years of experience. Now, I wish I had identified, all right, what I like to do, creative writing, as a child, and that way I had, I would have 30 plus years of creative writing experience, of repetition, not two. Uh, but why? What? Just do it. Repetition is the key to effective learning. Get better at it. You've heard practice makes perfect. It is true. Some people say perfect practice makes perfect. But whatever. Doing it makes you. And, and, and here's the thing. No, I'm not going to get to that. But doing it allows you to get used to doing it. To any, Regardless of what the act is. For me, it's writing. But if you want to get better as a rock climber. If you want to get better as a weightlifter. If you want to get better as a guitar player. If you want to get better at being nice to people, the way to do that is to do it. And that's why uh, one of my podcast episodes, which I don't recall right now which one it is, but the title of it is, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. That's it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Just do it and you'll get better. Now, there are some exceptions to this, of course. Uh, Anything that requires a license, right? So... Brain surgery, uh, uh, law, um, any of those other things, then, you know, don't cut anybody's head open and say you're doing it for practice. That Those are examples. Those are uh, exceptions to this rule. But other than that, most of us, we want to get better at uh, fishing or golfing or guitar playing or writing or writing poetry or any of these things. We don't need instruction we can just get started and start writing, start uh, woodworking, start fishing, start skiing. Uh, we can do any of these things on our own. We do not need to wait for instruction. However, step three is get instruction. Get a mentor, get instruction, read books. You can read books on the topic. You don't have to take a class. You don't have to do any of those things. Um, and I'll give you a perfect example, one from my life. Um, I'm saying um so much. 
I had a couple of beers already. If you follow following along, I'm at my buddy's house, so what does that mean? Fucking drink beer. Uh, my background is heating and air. I have years and years and years of experience in heating and air. And I started off in the military. They sent me to tech school. I'm 18 years old. I'm going to tech school. I I did okay. I did okay in tech school. It was the first con- first time I ever got a compliment from somebody uh, while I was in school, pretty much. First time anybody ever said, you're good at this. And I'll never forget that. I don't remember that instructor's name. But it's the first time anybody really ever said, you're good at this. So I did get instruction. But like many things in many schools, you don't learn things that are necessarily applicable in the field. You learn stuff because you need to get that certificate before you can go into the field. Uh, For example, real estate. You can't get your real you can't get your real estate license without taking the classes and you take classes on all this real estate law. None of it, which is applicable in the field, and none of it teaches you how to sell real estate and how to do the forms and the paperwork and all of that. But it's bureaucratic bullshit, so you got to get the certificate first. So I went to trade school. Then I went out and I got in the field. And I worked for years and years and years and years and years. Well, not that long. Let's see. I got in the field in 93. And then I got out and got the job. What I'm going to come back to is... Somewhere around 99. So for seven years I worked in the field. Then in 99, almost 2000, it was almost it was December of 99, I got a job as an instructor teaching HVAC. Now what I ended up having to do while I taught as an instructor is I had to learn the material. And I learned so much because I had years of experience and I could relate to all these things that I was reading in the book, all these things that I was telling to my students. I, I, one thing I loved about being an instructor was looking out into, into the classroom and seeing those light bulbs go off where I know that I reached a student, that what I'm trying to relate to them uh, is happening. The thing is, is my own light bulbs were going off. Students may have not have known that, but I was teaching myself and I was learning stuff myself and I... Sorry. <laughs> and I learned an ungodly amount of information about HVAC and heating and air conditioning by having to go to school, even though I was the instructor, but having to go to school after so many years in the field. So I'm not saying instruction is bad, but I'm saying doing it is better. And another example is like listening and reading and listening to like audiobooks and podcasts about a certain thing. Let's say entrepreneurship. And you listen and you study and you listen to this podcast for years and you read all these books, but you never, never, never do it. What good does that instruction do you? What good does, does all of that information do you if you don't act on it, if you don't do it? I see and know people. I went to a seminar on coaching and I met a guy who said he's on a 10 year plan. He's going to start coaching in 10 years. And in the meantime, he's going to start learning as much as he can. He's going to go to seminars and workshops and and get certifications and blah, 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 and do all this stuff. Will that make him a good coach in 10 years? Or would 10 years of coaching make him a good coach in 10 years? That's a good question. Step number f- three was get instruction. This could be a mentor. The, um, I can also say uh, can get help, right? You, it may take some time to find a mentor or find somebody who's good that you like, or that you look up to, or who's willing to teach you or who will even be a good teacher. That could take a while. But I do know that Getting help helps. So, in the meantime, you practice. You do it. You do it. And then you find a teacher or you find somebody who can help you. And they can say, like, "Mm, 
just pointing out one minor one having somebody that can point out one silly correction um can improve everything that you're working on one minor correction can improve make a vast improvement and that's where having a mentor or somebody who a teacher or somebody who's done it um come into play and the mentor doesn't have to be from uh somebody you actually know and you meet with them and it can be a, what's called a mentor from afar somebody who who in the, the world out there does what you want to do and you follow them on social media and you talk to them you write to them and you comment on their stuff and you read their books and you do all that stuff they can be your mentor from afar it doesn't have to you don't have to actually have somebody who can literally come to your house and teach you all right step four this is an important one step four is get used to fucking up you are gonna fuck up this is the problem and i think i've mentioned this before but i during a nanorimo uh, national novel writing month last year i met a lot of writers a lot of writers who are better writers than me probably but you will never see their work they've written for years they have they crank out thousands and thousands of words they've probably written several manuscripts but they're afraid of fucking up they're afraid of getting getting criticized they're afraid of publishing you know stories with holes in them whatever it's insecurity which is the biggest contributor to anybody's flaws i think is insecurity afraid of what people are going to think and that's what that's what you have to get used to mistakes are learning tools they're not mistakes yes they're mistakes but they're not a negative they're not a bad thing they are learning tools the only bad mistake is when you don't learn from and if you don't know how to do something you're going to make mistakes you're going to fuck it up you're going to have typos in your manuscript you're going to have typos in your published book you're going to have words missing you're going to have plot holes. You're going to have undeveloped characters. I'm talking to myself, right? This happened to me. But I would have never published that first book. I would have never written that book. I would have never published it. I would have never thought, maybe I should publish another one. People wouldn't have read it, flaws and all, and said, when's your next book coming out? And inspiring me to write another book, right? None of this would have happened. I wouldn't be on the third and have the fourth written and thinking about a fifth in this series, all right? None of that would have happened if I never published that book full of errors. That error-filled book, Los Chocolates. And it does hurt. It kind of sucks when I see a mistake or when I, you know, when mistakes come up. Oh, my God, my stomach. When mistakes come across... You know, uh, when I, hopefully they're gone. I've paid, you know, a couple different people to to find mistakes. And yeah, it sucks when I'm like, oh, shoot. People own this book and it has this mistake in it. It sucks. But I got to say that not being a published author would suck even more right now. Um, So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for those mistakes. Get used to them. If you're afraid, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fuck up. And if you're afraid to fuck up, you're not going to start, which circles back to number one, right? There's no way that you can start off anything you've never done before, anything that you want to get good at, and you can start off as a beginner and not make mistakes. You got to get okay with making mistakes. You got to accept it. You gotta be the one to say, hmm. blow it off. And if you're the one, if you're one that's super embarrassed, that and, and, and you feel ashamed, and you're gonna start making excuses, you're gonna start justifying this and and, and, and hiding and not wanting the people to see. People don't want to see your work. If you don't want people to see your work, don't show it to them. But if you want to be something like a published author, you're gonna have to show people. They're gonna have to see your mistakes, and you're gonna make them. All right. Uh, let me recap how to get good or better at anything. First, decide what it is you want that to get good at. It can be damn near anything. I guess it can be anything, right? Even if you want to be a brain surgeon, you have to decide that you want to be a brain surgeon. 
Step two is once you decide what it is you want to get good at, start doing it. You want to be a stand-up comedian? Start telling jokes, motherfucker. Right? Don't read books. Don't take a comedy class. In fact, Jerry Seinfeld had to, went to speak at a comedy class one, 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 I don't know, one time or what. But his response was, what he said is like, the fact that you are here should be enough to let you know that you are no good at this. <laughs> What he could be saying is the fact people are, the only way to get better is to do it, right? He could be saying you're not funny, but the only way to get good at anything is to do it. And um, that's step two. I realized there was a story I wanted to tell. There's a reason why I went to all this and I didn't do it. Maybe I should be able to hit it. Step two is to do it. Step three is to get instruction. Yes, get instruction. But not until after you start doing it because instruction could cause you to put off doing it. And the only way to get better at it is to do it. All right. And fourth is to get used to making mistakes. So here I am, number two, telling you to start doing something you don't know how to do. You're going to make mistakes. But that's going to be the way to progress. If you're going to get up there and tell jokes. Now, this is why I remember you can tell jokes, sometimes people won't laugh. And this is why I want to talk about all this. Is uh, Two Fridays ago, I went to an open mic at a bookstore and I read a story. A story that I'm not going to share here. But the story is entitled, My Quadulin Story. And it's about my father's story. About his Quadulin Story. That we've all heard a thousand times. That's part of the part. So this, this is my story of my dad's Quadulin Story. And that's why the title is My Quadulin Story. Quasulins Island, Marshall Islands, and Pacific Ocean. I'm not going to get into it. But I want to be a public speaker. I want to get up in front of people and give, I don't know, I guess it sounds corny, but motivational speeches. My background is that I am a practically illiterate, dumb kid with ADD who stuttered. And that's the key, right? I want to be a stutterer who goes out and makes a living by giving public, public speak, in, in public speaking. I would like to be a stutterer who makes a living in public speaking just so that some kid that's in high school or some kid that's in elementary school or junior high, if I go to somewhere where this kid sees me speaking and I talk about the fact that I stuttered, that people call me Porky Pig, that people made fun of me, that I stuttered just like the king in the king's speech did. It wasn't a minor stutter. It was a major stutter. And that now that I, I want to go out and give public, and, and now that here I am, look at me. You can do it. You can achieve, you can get past this. I don't know. I don't know what I want to talk about, but I want to, just the fact that I can get up there and talk as a stutterer is something that I want to do. So when I went to this open mic and I got up in front of people and I thought, oh, natural at talking. I'm a natural at talking to people. I get in front of a crowd. I don't care. I used to be an instructor. I used to be a teacher. I, I don't avoid any opportunity to talk in front of people whatsoever. I'm not bashful when it comes to that. But I got up there. And I got nervous. My heart was, rate was going. My voice was, was breaking. And and um, I could feel my f- hands start to tremble a little bit. But... That's a sign that I, that's me showing that I need to improve, that I need to keep working on that, that that's something that I need to do over and over again. So I put in for another one. It's called a story slam. It's coming up this week. I have to put my name in a hat. Maybe my name will get drawn. Maybe it won't, but I'm going to get up there and I'm going to tell a story. And I'm going to, in the small crowd of people. And it's something that I obviously want to get good at. So I'm doing it and I'm doing it and I'll get feedback, see what people think. And, uh, I'm I'm already used to fucking up. So what, what, what worse can happen? But I got to get better at public speaking because that's really what I want to do at some point in time in my life. All right, folks, that's it. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate you tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter at David E. Soto, Jr on Instagram at David E. Soto Jr. And 
my website. I don't even know what my stupid ass website. I got an email list. Nobody signs up for. Her. I send emails. Nobody. I don't. Even, I hate my email list. So I'm gonna stop talking about. It. <laughs> find me on Twitter. Find me on Instagram. You can DM me. You can at at message me. I'll respond to you. I enjoy it. Uh, that's it, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in.